What's up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe Show, the home of Epic Conversations. I'm the host of Epic Conversations, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. And once a month, I host online conversations for fathers that are co-sponsored by Dad Central, Canada's national father organization, and Dove Med Care. And always, I'd like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether it's live on the replay, if it's live, we're broadcasting live on September 17, 2020. And I'm so happy and jacked that we have a regular day now during the week that we get these two black American lady thought leaders who drop knowledge bombs on stagger state of things. And this afternoon, I was looking at stuff and I'm saying, wow, there's some stuff that neither of them know about they're going to be chatting about in real time because you got to talk about it. And even the producer said tonight before we went live, are they going to be talking about this? Are they going to be talking about this? So we're going to make it happen. So let's welcome Aisha K. Staggers and Jill D. Jones. What is up, ladies? Hello. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Wow, a lot, apparently. I know. <laughs> you said. I know you came on and told us stuff we didn't even know. Exactly. Oh. Well, like I said, it. Uh, first of all, how are your lives before we get to the madness? Good. I actually was going to share with you um, until all this got... Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I found the first Tina Marie album that I got with Jill on it. Oh, wow. wow. I had it. Yeah, I found it. You know, oh, you that's know, so nice. You know what it yeah. makes you think? We have to have I just a want Jeff Jill on by herself <laughs> and have her share her journey. You know, I, I'm bad host. Bad <laughs> no, it's okay. No, no, but 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 people when I mention prop, props to Ms. Jill when I mentioned Jill is on we could go, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? And th okay. these are people in Canada and the US, Jill. Oh wow, yeah. really? Yes. Yeah. I'm honored. I had no idea. You know, and you're such a humble soul, even though you're boisterous yeah. every week. <laughs> <laughs> you're, such, you're such a humble soul. Oh, so, but and, hard to be and, humble these days. You know, you know, is it lighter in California? Yeah, I mean, the smoke is uh, cleared a little bit in my neighborhood and where we are, but I still haven't been back playing tennis like normal. So. Because okay. of the smoke, you can still, it's in the air and the air quality is still bad. But, you know, it's, this definitely should be another wake up call for everybody. But only a few are going to wake up. We still got so many Rip Van Winkles in this country. So I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, you can see the, um, the smoke around the sun here. Yes. That's what I heard. Yes. I heard it had traveled all the way back east. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you know, yeah. I just read a crazy article that was saying by 2070 that there will be so many people displaced across the globe mm -hmm. um, that a lot of these cities won't even exist anymore. Mm. There, It's just going to be hell. So God bless those having babies and, you know, bless you. This mm. is. This is for real. I mean, I, I, it, we are really, I, I think it's irreversible now, the climate change. Yeah. Well, think about how the dynamic of Florida has changed with a lot of Puerto Ricans in Florida because True. of the hurricanes. But just the dynamic alone of having that many 
illiterate people in one state is is just enough to like have it just get carved off and be taken away. I mean, in all of America, the illiteracy rate is off the chain, mm -hmm. up to the very top. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and see, and we they've already they're already fired up and dropping knowledge yep. already. We haven't got to our menu yet, so that was the appetizer, folks. Now the main course begins. So. <laughs> In the last few hours, and I had to share this with both of them, two interesting commentaries right off the bat. So first up, 45 signed an executive order today to establish a, quote, a national commission to promote patriotic education, unquote. 45 made the announcement about what he dubbed the 19, no, 1776 commission at the White House conference today on American history. He said that the commission will be aimed at establishing, quote, patriotic, unquote, and pro and, quote, pro-American, unquote, education that will celebrate American history. In his, his remarks, 45 criticized the 1619 Project, a New York Times project that explores slavery's legacy. Because they're bringing it into the classroom now as required learning for slavery. It's easy for teachers to have a curriculum, but... I was all of one throughout most of the year until September when I turned two. But in 1976, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they have a 1776 commission that was steeped in this kind of thing for the um, 200 year anniversary of the country? If I'm not mistaken, of the Constitution? I if think I'm you might mistaken, be right. I, I think that, you know. I have some anniversary coins that my grandmother gifted my mother for me to let them grow old as an antique that I could use one day to trade in. <laughs> I still have the coins. That's why I'm like, kind of like. Jill, what are your thoughts on this one? I mean, I think, you know, uh, when is he going to have us do the Sig Heil? Um, <laughs> or, you know, it, it's, He's a Nazi, and so is everybody else in his cabinet. I mean, they I'm have a Nazi it. agenda, and yeah. um, it, there's nothing else you could say. I mean, the, that's what it is. They already teach their history, and look what it's gotten them. You know, they that's okay. The rest of the world doesn't want uneducated people. That's okay. Let them all sit here and rot, because everybody else is going to go on with it. And it'll just make it a little bit harder for them to migrate anywhere else. Nobody will want you. You're an idiot. It's 1776. They didn't haven't even gotten half of that right. I mean, it, it's absolutely the fact that he, you know, had to go into disparaging the 1619 project. It's not going to stop the diaspora, white people. We're not going anywhere, except if the next agenda is to mass murder all of us, which I believe that's their agenda, is to commit genocide on a higher level, because they've gotten away with it with, with um, this, mm -hmm. uh, with COVID. But I truly believe that Donald Trump wants to murder and kill all Black people. Aisha? The point of the 1619 Project was to not just teach about slavery, but Black people needed to have an, a point of origin. African Americans, Black people born into this country, we are the only people who are of this country who don't have a history, that a documented history point of origin because it was ripped away, not documented for us and it was a form of punishment you know murder was a form of punishment for us to pass these things down and literally document them write them down because writing was considered reading and writing was considered punishable by death we were not allowed to do those things so having a 1619 project in 2020 has become necessary it's, it's like having that history in one place for us. Um, having the That's why having the museum is so important. Having that museum in DC is so important. Um, but 
you of course expect someone who's so illiterate, who's so uneducated, un unknowledgeable about history and the way things work, that they would of course build or sign an, an executive order built and steeped in white supremacy because that's all his campaign is about. This is a campaign issue for him. He, ha he has nothing, he has no strategy. So he's just throwing things at the wall. The, uh, the, 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 excuse me, I have my, uh, what do you call it? To make your teeth straight? <laughs> the, um, yeah, the retainer in. So throwing things at the wall. Uh, I can't get to stay, to throw, throw things. Just throwing things out. To hope they stick, huh? Yeah. Throwing things out to hold them still. Then, yeah. it, now let trying, me not to, trying not to get my, uh, what do you call it? Um, biting my teeth. No problem. Relax. Mm -hmm. easy, easy. Yeah, I have seizures, so. No problem. I bite a lot. Okay. Want to ask then, has 45 ever went to the African American Museum? <laughs> no. And also, if I'm not mistaken, the UN has I've never this. been to that church listed as like the decade of of um, Africans, right. So, yep. you know, in, in my mind, you know, he's just revolting on every le level. But as I keep pushing and saying to people, this is not just about black people in this country. Mm -hmm. It's about the whole African diaspora. And without one doing well, we none of us do. This movement, you can sit, they can be, the white people can freak out over just Black Lives Movement. This is a movement that's global, it's international. And the more you wanna disenfranchise, displace our even emotions that we may have or may have even thought to have for this country, you take that away, good luck. Yeah. Because then if I don't have an allegiance to anywhere, you got a problem. Yeah. You got a problem with people in the globe and they better fucking recognize this because this is not going to be, you know, roots 2020, yeah. uh, 1980, yeah. whatever. This ain't it. Ain't none of us, some chicken George people, they got them on, on the Republicans. Those are chicken George folks, you know, cooning all the damn time. This is not going to play out because as I've said before, many times, we are in a very interesting planetary alignment and it's got Saturn all over it. Anytime Saturn shows up in any of the transits, it's karmic. Karma, 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 karma. And I think so, you have forgotten Jill, good luck. Too, that the people in Africa wanted to know what happened to their ancestors who went over to America. They needed they to, they did, needed to but know just also the people in they Africa were, yeah. are starting to say, hang on a minute. What about our resources? And what are we what are we doing here? It's changing so many ways. I yeah. mean, Nigeria, come on, there's 250 kingdoms in there of actual legitimate. You're talking wealthy people. It, it, it's you know, the fact is these people can't count their money, count their resources. Their resources are ever turning. We all still need a phone. We still need Africa. And the only way we've ever known how white people have ever known how to get anything is to go in and steal it. Yeah. Those days are getting ready to be over very, very soon. Because yeah. the biggest thing they want to do now is to keep all people in the black diaspora separated. I keep yeah. saying it when I see people with this pecking order of the light skin one, the this one, the brown one. People can wake up and get over it. That's not the game. That's their game. We're still all that one drop rule. Put it together. You got it. You're in the you you are of African descent. Get together. I don't care if you're blue, green, purple, whatever. If you are of African descent, you're a part of the African diaspora and what they don't want is all of us to unite. Yeah. And, and think about it. The way the reason that they have to make Africa so unappealing is because it has it is the one continent that has every natural resource available to it. Absolutely. Right. It's it definitely. I mean, they even have gone so far as to produce films that disparage African people and have had actual 
black people perform in those movies. Those movies did a disservice to us. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why not, they had those were propaganda. Party. Those are propaganda films, essentially. Put down yeah. the black man, do this, do that. You know, come on, wake up. We are oh. all united. We're together. Yeah. They treat us all the same anyway, the same everywhere. They they yeah. just do. Wait, have you seen the um the African version of Purple Rain? Oh, I didn't I haven't been able to, but it's a Nollywood film. I love Nollywood films. They're amazing. They're okay. amazing. Ladies, I'm gonna cut it because you could stay forever on this one and we got so much to do okay. tonight. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let's move on. Another Can one of town your hall? Yeah, no, no, please, please. no, no, no. We still got another one of your favorites this oh. afternoon. Um, Attorney General Bill Barr says, other than slavery, the coronavirus stay-at-home orders are the great quote, the greatest intrusion on civil liberties in American history. Only someone who would think that wearing a mask like slavery would ever make that comparison. How I mean, bad is it for these people? Why are they pandering so much? Did they see their numbers? Because, I mean, they might as well get out and start playing banjos and handbone because I'm really <laughs> curious what is going on with Bill Barr and the, his, his numb nut. You know, because the reality is what happened? These people are supposed to be, they just delegitimize themselves every day. Every yeah. day. Go on, Aisha. Yeah. But it, it's it's the funniest thing to me. It's like I see people whining and crying about having to wear a mask every freaking day on Twitter. It's like, oh my god, I have to wear a mask. And it's like it's just the most painful thing in the. World. It's like really not getting whipped eighty times. Yeah, isn't the worst thing in your life, or better yet, having someone take out all of your reproductive organs without your permission. Exactly. So, um, having your child you know, taken from you and fed to an alligator. I mean, come on, let's talk about all of these, you know, things during slavery. Oh no, it's the white people's pity party. Oh, it's all about me, 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 yeah. me. I can't breathe. Bitch, if you can't breathe, fine. Let these him, tears I'm are with delicious, Michael, I'm with Michael what's his face, uh, the RNC guy the other day. He's oh like, my God. I'm did so you, over it. I'm so over that. I don't really care. You know what? Go out, get it. You keep giving it to people. You give it to somebody that I know. I keep my tracker on. I will always keep my COVID tracker on, at least to know who I was in proximity with. That's all. And for my family as well. You Consequences, baby. Mm -hmm. Did you see Michael Steele last night? Yes. He Michael was amazing. Michael Steele got blackity black 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 all over and i was like <laughs> i was happy to see it yeah because that like, was just it was pure, just like, I'm sick pure, of this. This is dumbass people it's true we have been spending so much time and then you also you know going oh these people why are they not wearing masks you also have the sick ones who are just clout chasers they yeah. want to be karens they want to be on video they they're okay with that we got to think of yesterday. another solution. And Never. I don't think it should be aired. I think that, you know, I've been starting to communicate with people offline yeah. about what we're planning. It ain't online. And you get vetted very heavily before you get in my club and before yeah. my conversations are shared. I pulled that line. That's Remember what, what we do now. Remember we what do I not communicate you? online about our strategies because it doesn't work. No, remember what I called people yesterday when somebody called them anti-maskers? I said, you don't call them anti-maskers. You call them a, um, potential attempted murderers because that's what yeah, they are. They that's are. They are. When they're not wearing masks, they don't know if they have COVID or not because no, you can't they get don't. tested. So, but we just got to make this thing where, you know, you just walk away from them, get away from them and run like they're the plague. If they want to get up in your face then and yep. they start fronting, then they got a problem. Here's the thing. If you can be sent to jail for knowingly giving someone HIV. HIV, then if you give somebody, I agree. Right. I've said the same thing. It should be the same kind of law. But since, they, since the president and old fat Bill Barr, or whatever his name is, I mean, the brown noser who wrote a, le a love letter to Trump, that's how he got his job. That's how they all get it. They sell their soul. And 
Um, so basically with them, I, I don't know. I, I Do you trust these people? No, nobody trusts them. Like I said, let them all rot together. There will yeah. be some repercussions for their ignorance. You know, it's right. so funny. I was told you guys that the next thing you know, they'll be eating each other. And that literally is supposed to happen in the days of Kali Yuga related to like uh, studying. Um, and they'd be the first up there eating y'all, pretending that it, it's okay. Well, I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm going to move on to the next <laughs> conversation to subject. So um, our producer really wanted to hear what both of you have to say about 45's town hall he conducted on ABC this week. When that black lady told him, <laughs> when she told him, let me finish, and he shut right up, this is the power of black women in I just saw the power of black women in this election. Now we just need to come out in numbers, but we can't do it by ourselves. And I like I saw something on Twitter that reminded me of that, where this white woman was like, you know, black women are going to have to lead us out of this mess. No, we're not. It's not, it's not our, our burden to fix this mess. We didn't make it. It's not our so burden. Have, President of Ghana it. said we can all go back there. And we could make it a strong ass country. Really? He sure did. Jill, did you have a chance to see any of the town hall? Yeah, I saw. I saw enough of it. And uh, I don't really waste my time listening to too much of his stuff, but I did see those people speaking, the uh, black gentleman who spoke. And for the most part, they were relatively polite. I just feel that they still need to find real people who yeah. who are too polite to him. There's just no freaking way I would say stop. I mean, it was great she said it and she's really nice, but they ain't going and finding people, the real people. The only that. part that I really did like was when George Stephanopoulos did um, finally fact check him in real time on the Obama stuff. He and did, but him. it would be better if somebody would just jump yeah. up from their chair and say, okay, we're done, this is it. I mean, it's like, how much more can we take? Yeah. Honestly, it's like, okay, you know what? You're not being real. You're showing up here. Is this, bye. You're not yeah. real. Bye. Well, and you know, it's, this unfortunate. Is it's unfortunate. Um, it's just, it's just the but, way it is. But you know, it's the dance. He gets a town hall. Biden gets a town hall. Then comes the. the no, the Biden country. could have his town hall. So <laughs> let him have his town hall. You know, you like know? I said. It's the it's the political dance. What's on the schedule? True, that's true. I just think it's a waste of time to waste any of your life. He's I already robbed it. us for four years. Well, I saw of our on time. the replays of the um the uh news shows. I didn't watch it. I didn't know it was on. I mean, <laughs> then you go and he signs an executive order. He didn't lower. He didn't lower prescription costs didn't get any health insurance for people. Doesn't look like he's planning to. He's not done so much, but to sit there and go over it and over it. Like I said, we and a group of people are have taken this stuff offline and having those conversations. And there's a lot of people who are really were his followers. Be, he didn't fulfill some of the they thought he should have gotten. And, and that is not worth any polls. They, these people, we instructed people, don't respond to the polls. It's He's lying about how many people are dying from COVID, lying about it, full on, messing with what he did with the CDC director. It, it's pointless. It is pointless to be transparent with somebody who is lying to you. Yeah. Why that, would you, why, why you waste your time? You're going to tell a medical doctor that he did not understand the question. No, you didn't understand. And another question. piece of advice, if you have white friends you're not sure about and you think they're voting for him, mm. shut it up, shut it down. Don't tell your business because those will be the first people to be reporting your ass on something. Shut it down. They are not to be trusted. None of them. What really scares me is that he is not that's I wrote this article that came out um, yesterday called uh, Voting While Black. This man is not playing with us when he said says that he's going to send um, National Guard 
to polling places. He's, he's not, not polling. Lying. He's going mm -hmm. to specifically do that. And that's something he's going to do it. And he's going to try and do it mostly where black people and Democrats are voting to intimidate. It's true. And, you know, I think that uh, good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah. Which he, he legally does not have the right to do. No, you know, well, like I said, good luck. Yeah. Let's move on to another <laughs> interesting, interesting individual, mm -hmm. uh, a gentleman named Michael Caputo. So let's a little back on the 45 administration health official embroiled in a furor of political mm -hmm. meddling with the coronavirus response is taking a leave of absence, the government announced yesterday. The Department of Health and Human Services said in a statement that Michael Caputo was taking time taking the time to, quote, focus on his health and the well-being of his family. He is the, he was the department's top spokesman, apologized on Tuesday to his staff for a Facebook video in which he reportedly said scientists battling the coronavirus are conspiring, conspir conspiring sorry, against 45 and warned of shooting <laughs> if, if 45 were to lose the November election. Aisha, you wanted to talk about this. I, yeah. Go cool. for it. <laughs> I just, that to me is representative of every person that works for this man. They are willing to shoot on site. I think that if you saw that, you, you, see, you know everyone who works for him and everyone who votes for him. This mm -hmm. is how they feel. If you, if you saw that, you should have no doubt in your mind that True. everyone is crazy. There should be no doubt in your mind at this point that these people do not need to be in charge of anything. True. At all. Yeah. And you need to vote straight ticket all the way down. Forget right. picking, you know, you know, here, no. All the way down to the person who stacks the books on the shelf at the library. Blue. Kabuki mm. theater. At one point, I'm like, uh, oh, quel dommage. What's that? That's that's these people. I've said it before. You never know how fake it is, how real it is. Does he really have worms in his brain? Uh, did they really give everybody a lobotomy when they go in and become a part of the administration? Because I'm beginning to think that they actually do something to people's brains. Um, it's so strange. I don't know if I believe it or if it was a diversion because we were all starting to talk about, you know, people being uterus collectors. Uh, you know, it's really hard to tell with those men because all of these men, you know, will just suck him off at any time he calls and asks him to do something. So it, it, it's ridiculous. And I don't care if he goes crazy and he's worried about the shadows. I really don't give a shit. You know, I hope. I hope it's like what happened in Ghosts for Your Ass when that dude got hit by the car and then things just start crawling up. I hope he experiences that every single damn night. And it just, it, it all just, of them. All of yeah. them. And it just goes to show you how not even well prepared any of them are for their jobs because remember he hires this guy who has an iffy resume and says that he worked at at a university in um canada that he didn't even work for <laughs> the university is like no he's really? not on our table. are you kidding me oh my no. god the university is like he's not on our table and then he said <laughs> that he also worked at stanford and stanford's like uh he hadn't been on our payroll in like 10, 15, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> what was he, the dry cleaner on Stanford? No, uh, he was the, getting, or the, no. the, no, he the like communication, um, like the, uh, something. The receptionist. No, <laughs> I mean, that was like deciphering the um, information that he was getting Your from the, um, the um, medical people. Oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> it's wow okay. you know so is I mean, Stanford call. wrote like a five page letter <laughs> no <laughs> really the letter started out and said your colleagues <laughs> oh shoot lord have mercy Jesus help us <laughs> so yeah. we got through some heavy things quite quick but I think 
the the next person I think both of you will maybe do a deep dive in and there's a two-parter first of all Kanye West thinking that 45 should be elected that's a part one we also have a part two but that part his support for 45 what are your thoughts here's the thing Kanye West got I won't say what for we're gonna get to that part I guess yes yeah that's part two Kanye West got suspended yesterday on Twitter yeah. for a number of hours yet he supports a man who does offensive things all the time that man should be um kicked off twitter too we'll discuss that but kanye west thinks then why is he running for president to mess up joe biden's yeah, chances I, I, get, I get i get that but yeah the thing is that that's not a reason to run for president. oh my god kanye <laughs> You okay, Aisha? Are no. You okay? Oh my God. <laughs> Joe, Joe, what are your thoughts? Back in the about day, it? before you get to that, back in the day, I used to be like, you know, so and so's crazy. Not Kanye crazy, but crazy. Now Kanye's <laughs> not even Kanye crazy. Kanye's like <sighs> Kanye's like that lady that lives down the street from my mother crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> He's, I think that Kanye West, it's like, I personally think uh, he's another one scratched off my list. I don't care what happens to Kanye West. I'm Maybe not interested in Kanye good. West. I'm not interested. I, I hope, all I hope is that his wife and his family protect their little kids who are related to him. Um, I think that it's really very dangerous that he's out and about in such a way. Mm -hmm. The enabling, I, I think that I hope they protect their children. And um, thank God she had surrogate children because maybe they could have caught the gene of whatever he has inside if they did any kind of testing on the embryos because that would be horrible to have that genetic thing pass to his but children. But there's surrogates of her, not him. That's the challenge. No, but you can still, when you go in and you you can start like sifting through, who, girl, I don't know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I really don't know. All I'm saying is I hope they protect their children. Um, I I wouldn't even let them take them to the park. Um, well, that's just remember, how, her mother did, um, her mother I did. I would be very afraid of this person. Yeah, because, remember, her mother because, did sell sex tape of her and Ray J when she was like what six seventeen eighteen? Yeah, I mean it what however that played out, I just really feel really bad for the kids involved because yeah. what he's doing and why he thinks um uh, you know I don't know they could have offered him money from the alt right to offer him fame and fortune and all the things that Kanye loves so he could have more money than Kim has. I mean I'm sure those are really hard stumbling blocks but yeah I'm not a huge Kim Kardashian fan, but God bless her to be with somebody, you know, who's, this is abuse to have to put up with this. Here's the it's thing. abusive on a, on a certain level because you, you are supposed to be somebody's wife, not their mother. And, you know, it, it's a very undesirable partner. And I, I, the, uh, it's a noble thing of her to want to stand by him, but I think this one is a loser. It's a dog and it's not going to win the race. Well, here's the thing that always brings me back to this. And, and it's like somebody does really does need to get Kanye. The only person that could come and get Kanye is not here. The problem. I don't know why everybody says that about his mother. I, say, I have a feeling he was incredibly abusive. I have a feeling he was incredibly abusive to his mother. It's see, my something that he, he said what he wanted. He was rebellious. He did whatever. His mom just maybe. Let him do whatever he wants. But, we don't, but the thing is, we wouldn't, we don't know. We Kanye, know from his behavior with women. No, I disagree. And I disagree for this reason, because I look at him as a clinical case rather than just him being Kanye West and being Kanye West an artist. We don't know what Kanye West would have been like had he not had any kind of, I, I believe he suffered some brain damage in that accident. He has plates and all kinds of things in his head. But he has a father, doesn't he? He has a father, too. He does. So when where's his dad? I mean, this is like there's a, a big problem. And, he, and problem. he's not like he was a poor kid. He grew up wealthy. Yeah. They had money. No, and so it's not a bad I, mean, I, I look at it this way, though. But I, I wonder 
what kind what kind of what kind of person he would have been without any kind first of all any kind of brain injury always makes a mental illness three times worse so he has this mental illness which he probably got from the dad okay so you Think about one men person with mental illness trying to take care of another person with mental illness. That's a challenge. Right. But then I wonder if the mental, if the injury in imposes that. I don't think that Kim should be taking care of him. I really don't. I think no. that part of it is, is, is that he's obnoxious and arrogant. I do believe that. But I also wonder if he's we have this issue with oh he's, he's an adult it's not he's just hard. that he's manipulative that's yeah. what's really horrible i mean i couldn't live with that if he has a family i'd be on the phone and going y'all gotta come and get him because this is not flying anymore and i get you love people but yeah uh for a young woman to sacrifice her life and you see that hell you see how that ends yeah. i don't get it here's what, it, I, no. here's what i feel mm -hmm. for her and that, and that's why I'm like, this doesn't make any sense is that I feel for her in that at, if there's- Cause he if, brings her down. Her, now yeah. you hear his name, you go, oh, yeah. her, what, you, I feel she's, for, mm. what I feel for her is this, it's like, okay, if she feels like she can't call his family, it's too bad she can't call a mental, a mental institution and say, please come get him. Well, please you can thank Ronald him. Reagan for that. Yeah, and that's the part that bothers me is that she can't commit him because he he needs to be somewhere. He but does not need to be out. Also, the people that he's frequenting with, the Trumps, and all yeah. of the people exploiting him, but he wants to be exploited. I don't know how crazy he really is, except in the fact that he is has some issues, but he always was egotistical, and soon that type of thinking. We have a president who's cuckoo, cuckoo, cocoa nuts. Yeah. We also, don't you think that narcissism is a definitive illness? Th that's a result of it. Well, the thing though is, is that people have bipolar disorder. Charles Manson, same thing, bipolar, nothing. There's no, something else in, in with him. There's yeah, the some other have, stuff. I don't think he's been have, diagnosed properly. No, but people who have bipolar disorder can also be narcissistic, but narcissism is, is um, it gets man it manifests itself a lot bigger in people who when have when people disorders. start it's having those illusion delusions that they're god which this yeah. exhibited itself years ago yeah. those are the same people that go and just shoot up their whole family because god told them to for me why do we have to wait until something really horrible happens when you already see oh that's right because nobody believes in science anymore Right. He's actually been saying it, you know, he called himself Moses the other day. If you gave him, I promise you, and of course, I, I'll give um, Dr. Vibe the little uh, out here. I won't necessarily, I don't necessarily give medical advice, even though I used to be a therapist. If you gave him lithium on a regular basis, like they usually do give people who are bipolar, he would be a whole lot different. But as far as his political career, that is, that's narcissism. And that is people taking advantage of, people taking advantage of his narcissism, his bipolar, his bipolar disorder, his depression. He's got a lot of like, a, if somebody were to sit and diagnose, they have a lot, of, a list of things to go through. But this I is think- why it's such a sad marriage. Yeah, because anyone that gets into that position and you're feeding somebody those kind of pills with lithium and everything. Y'all ain't having sex. Y'all ain't even having like a real marriage because the, I'm, I'm sure a few people will get mad at me, but I'm sure there's a struggle to find the balance because Kanye feels to me like people that I've experienced who were almost minor schizophrenic to a level where they think that I'm fine. And they're usually highly intelligent people and they can look at their illness and go, yeah, I'm better. I don't need these pills. But the circle is always the same. After a point of time, wow, what short end of the straw did she draw? That was bad. Yeah. And, he, you and know? the thing is, is that he probably is schizophrenic and not bipolar. No, well, that's what I'm feeling. Because yeah. I, when you start getting in the uh, deities and that somebody was talking to 
you know, that that's hard. I mean, these people start to branch off and get involved in side relationships or things you don't know about. And it's their, your trust level with somebody with that kind of a mental thing. You can't do it when you're living in two different states, number one, yeah. and you're not having a real marriage. So what all I'm saying is when you ask about him, I feel incredibly sorry for yeah. his wife and his children because yeah. that is somebody who I had a relative that was causes codependency in your children. It causes them to to make excuses for you. It creates a lot of bizarre behavior that little kids just I don't care how rich they are. They can't hide that. It's like it's really important. And I don't see that he's changing for the better. Just like take away his stuff. Like even he should be like, take all my stuff away. Let me just try to get it. It doesn't look yeah. that way. He's too. It's just too bad. Yeah, and I, I've, I've had a relative that was schizophrenic and um, and and watch how family dealt with that and it's as bad as and, having and somebody have been around and have been around that and it just he need that's why i'm like he needs to be hospitalized to learn absolutely. like absolutely it's like when you walk home and you yeah. if you grow up with alcoholics as a child yeah. you sense immediately when someone's on their pills when they're when they're drunk even mm -hmm. before you walk through the house in your house yeah it's, so for me it's just we're all laughing or some of us are really pissed off but the really sad thing is that, wow, how it really affects a family is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And and I, I bet you, and because he's not there, because he's in another state, he doesn't have to see how it's affecting his children. And that. No, but that kids at school aren't really most, nice or like, hopefully they're all in quarantine. Sad or something. Is that it is affecting his children somehow. He's just not looking at it. I want to move on to part two, the con, con mm -hmm. thing about him uh, being suspended for twit from Twitter. Oh, I didn't even know that happened. Yeah, he was suspended yeah. for Twitter after sharing the contact information for Forbes editor in chief content officer Randall Lane. But then he also <laughs> wow. urinated on his one of his. Oh, Emmy, I saw one that. Of his Grammys, yeah. One of his Grammys. I saw so, that. Aisha, you wanted to chat about this. Go for it. He knows the rules. And my thing was this, if Kanye could get suspended for 12 hours, I don't understand how come Trump does just as offensive stuff, but can't get, they can't get suspended. Like that thing he did with um, uh, Joe Biden should have gotten him suspended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really should have gotten him suspended. Because if any, that should have gotten him suspended, retweeting, um, a post that had somebody saying white power should have gotten yeah. him suspended. True. Okay. Um, a lot of things should have gotten him suspended. He he docked Lindsey Graham. He should have gotten suspended for putting Lindsey Graham's. But um, they're never going to do that. Jack is never, never going to do, do that. It, you but know, they, we can't. We can't. Jack doesn't have the balls, and also he, is afraid. He, Jack, I think people are afraid of him. I think he's. I think he's afraid too. Jack's excuse is that he's the president. We can't suspend the president. He has a White House account that's different from his personal account. Totally. Just because he prefers to use the personal account doesn't mean that he doesn't have access to a presidential account. Right. He has the 46 account. Right. So, I so, mean, the 45 account. So, I don't understand. That's that's a piss poor excuse. And they really should be um, watching his account more closely because what he did, how many thousands and thousands and even a million people saw that Joe Biden um, before they even put a, a mis, misquoted or miss something the, um, the fast thing. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. I'm going to say one day somebody <laughs> going to do the wrong thing and it ain't going to be pretty. I'm telling you, it's, I just know, I mean, <clears throat> you can't yeah. keep pushing at people and it not have a consequence after a while. It's just, it just ultimately happens. I mean, I'm not entertained by anything Trump does anymore. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't laugh it off. I take him very seriously. Just like with Kanye West, he peed on his, on his statue, whatever. 
but this is where I have an issue. You profited and benefited from a system you're now going to be moaning about. Yeah, that was bad. You're willing to climb over black people to drag to do them it. down the uh, uh, Donald Trump road. You're willing to sell your brothers and sisters out with some, you can barely keep your brain together. Why the would anybody follow you? Yeah. It's really simple. You're in a P over, you ruined, Ta you went on uh, Taylor Swift, you had to make a big deal over her Grammy. It was so important to you. He's, he's, he's such a mess that there's really, it's embarrassing. Yeah. I'm so embarrassed for his kids. You Somebody know, called him like, out yesterday, I, though. Oh my God, that's somebody's father acting yeah. like a nut. But oh somebody called him out yesterday. She said he, when he was like type writing that black people need to stop being um, slaves and whatever, whatever to this system and this. And she said, but I thought you said slavery was a choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a choice. But just like when he chooses to like women, that's a choice. Right. You know, yeah. Kanye has a lot of problems. And, you know, now you're going to talk about masters and dragging Prince's name in it. Get that, get out, because I don't recall you being there trying to help him with it then. Right. Mr. Mr. Johnny yeah. come lately. You know, Prince and said, Michael Jackson, what did he say? He said they died. So nobody died for you. He he, died. You know, you know, first of all, how about every songwriter that has worked with Kanye, all the 30 people that are on one song get, you know, real their real share of money yeah but he said he said I not care. I when he, he, so I he benefits from he benefited from the payola from all the stuff that goes all the bad stuff that goes on in the business talking about people disparaging them yeah. kissing up to um jay-z and beyonce and now it everything's bad negro sit down all right, let's move he on. Said More than they enough time. Died so I could run though. But he said they died I, so I could run. I'm I'm almost certain that neither one of them really was thinking about Kanye running for president. Two Jehovah's Witnesses who don't vote. I don't think so, Kanye. He and that's another thing. He can't string it together anymore. His his brain is like rubber bands that have been like warped in the sun. I believe there's drugs involved. I'm just gonna say that. Let's stop. That's more than enough time on, on you. <laughs> okay, yeah, enough. I don't more ever want to talk time, about him anymore. More than enough time. Uh, Jill, we're finishing off on a on a movie that is yes. a very controversial. The movie. Jill. Yes. So I want you to take lead on the final topic tonight. Okay, so there is uh, a movie that's come out by French director uh, Mamounia, Mamouna. Ducoré, a French director. She's Senegalese and French, and she put out a movie. It's called uh, Mignons in uh, French. So the word itself is like more like innocent, but in America, they changed it to cuties. So she put this film out. It's a French coming of age film written and dire directed by her. There's been a lot of upheaval and controversy because People said that the you know it's sexualizing young girls. They're in like a dance troupe, and yet the irony is it is about the sexualization of young kids in society that we do today, and it is loosely based on this director's life when she came from Senegal to, to Paris as a young girl. So the real question turn, comes now: Are we not allowed to tell a story of someone's life? Number one. Number two, I've heard people say, oh, they should have used an adult to play a 10 year old um, or filmed it carefully. Would I say it's probably the best expression that came out of the film? Because a lot of people say it's still, they didn't get the message that it's about hypersexuality, sexualization. And the trailer was done by an outside marketing company for Netflix. So people were the Q people in those crazy, Pedo groups want to boycott Netflix. But in her defense, this director, you know, first of all, people in America watch reality shows that aren't real, like real house of wives of whatever, it of, of fake lives. Have we lost something where we can't 
we can't really uh, speak on it if it is your life. Maybe it wasn't done as well as it possibly could have been, but maybe it got lost in translation from the French language to English and also remember how stupid Americans are. They don't understand and there's no cognitive skills now when people are watching films. They're totally reactive. Even I did at the first, like, oh my God, this trailer. The trailer was totally sexualized the girls. You wouldn't have even known it was about, you know, um, our society. But it also brings into the question, how, where have these people, these same people who have gone crazy and loved dance moms for seven or eight seasons, even when that old cow had to go to jail for some craziness she did, uh, pageant little tiaras, toddlers with tiaras, John Benet Ramsey, all of it. It is our society. So the movie has held up a mirror and everybody is mad at the director and they're pissed off. So I had an issue because I even brought up the thing with Prince having, we, we've all been a victim of it or maybe participated in something based upon just how we grow as a society. Do we always have to make something uh, like so much dirtier than it is? Because I'm starting to think like everybody just has really dirty, disgusting minds because Dance Moms was equally the same. In fact, it's about people who sexualize kids with these dance shows. And every time I look and would see these kids doing all these moves, they have adult choreographers, they're not really childlike, so that's that's my issue. I don't know if you guys had heard all the hoopla about it, but what hypocrisy? What hypocrisy? Look at our look at ourselves. We created this, and now somebody can't even. There would be so many movies that can't even be made. So many movies. Tatum O'Neill would have never been in Paper Moon. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would have put Billy Barty there, pretending to be a girl, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but think about it, because. There is some kind of expectation and something going on with sexuality that um, is very Handmaid's Tale where we're headed. However, they still watch Victoria's Secret runway shows. People yeah. still lust over girls who are too young to be wearing makeup in a freaking fashion magazine. So if you wanna fix one thing, please fix it all. And I got a whole list of shows and, and companies that need to be addressed on this. Ageism, you want a young chickie in your office. Nope, no more, no more. No more young interns at companies because God forbid you start lusting after them. Yeah. Well, you and I were copied in um, the same post with a, a link to this, um, this um, clip and um, my reaction, I think the way that I have it, the reason I had my reaction was what I felt was kind of appropriate to what I should have felt if I had watched the whole movie. Like this was happening, like, like I was the yeah, child and right. this was happening to me as a child because right. I had been a victim of child sexual abuse. And I'm like, I was fearing for those girls because my thought and my response was like, it wasn't so much about, it was, it wasn't just the girls. I'm like, those guys watching them are gross. I'm like, it's like that feeling I said, and I explained why I had that reaction because I'm like, you know, going through that, you, it takes you a while to be comfortable with having men look at you. You always feel kind sure. of eh, afterwards. And, you know, until you grow into un into it, but for a while, even, you know, you just feel that way. And I had taken dance lessons at the time that this had been happening. So even in like, you know, your dance uniforms and, you know, costumes and everything, you still feel kind of naked. But that's performing. not our fault as women. Right. That's men's fault and the way they're raising their sons. Right. Because you could be in a snowsuit and a sexual predator will right. still find a way to do something about it. And that's what I'm finding. It's creating a lot of shame coming of mm -hmm. age. People, look at your kids. They right. are not blossoming. Some of, They are having sex at 11 years old at some schools. I mean, like 
So when are they coming of age and when are we going to talk about this? Because yeah. all this is doing, it's censorship and it starts people to just shutting up. Yes, there are certain ways to film on set. But if you hear people, they have people on set. It's totally legit. There's some serious things that go on. There's teachers on set. It's probably more protected than these people's homes. Yeah. Walking home and oftentimes when they feel those, when they film those scenes, those girls are filmed in one, in one area, people are filmed but, in another area and they're not yes. even watching the actual. We are headed season. back into the area where we start creating where, okay, I know Billie Eilish wears clothes that look like she's wearing clown clothes, but is that because you don't want to show your body because she didn't want people to objectify her? But how, why should she have to do that? Why should anybody have to cater or pander just to make men stop degrading women for some reason? That's called a sickness. And why are you going to defend if you want to go there, then then playing with baby dolls and the dolls in the industry? Fix it. You know, and because girls, it this is a woman's younger. life. It's like if I had to show somebody that I know being raped at 10 years old, I can't put it in the film. You know, we have, but it's okay to show murders and rip people's throats out and to kill women on film in so many of these violent video games and all of it. So I, I'm just saying America and its hypocrisy in the world at this point is starting to become its own contradiction that there's nothing you could do. They've opened up a whole big can of hypocrisy and contradictions because for what they're going to rip this woman apart for. Granted, she may have not be the best director, but if you're looking at shit and you're seeing something dirty in it, I personally think you're the one who has a problem. When you start looking at little girls and you're, you know, twerking and all of that, yeah, I don't think it's pleasant, but how sad is it? This is like me having a conversation <laughs> with my grandmother at five and five years old and being told men will do this to you. Five, y'all need to fix these men. You need to fix them and their sick obsessions with porn and all this other objectifying women from day one. You need to address that. Get And, and then the freaky old freaky deaky evangelicals. Y'all need to go there. How about you remove that? Let's see what would happen to your society if you take away their men who who aren't even wives and girlfriends anymore. It's all online, isn't it, these days? I mean, you better fix it because you're going to sit up here and talk about this woman's um, uh, film about a coming of age story that was supposed to make you feel uncomfortable about how you're looking and checking for little girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I just, once I realized that I actually had an appropriate reaction to what the film was supposed to be about, then I was like, oh, okay, so this is what the film's about. So, Me okay, too. So this is what I felt. This is what I, this is what I was supposed to feel. Okay. And now I was like, okay, now I can look at this differently. Okay. So this is what it's about. Um, I started wondering then why were other people so freaked out about it they if, didn't even watch it yeah it was supposed to be this so then i watched the film um he, he, the one thing about it too is that if we're going to i was so surprised that i was wondering if the people were more worried about the little white girls in the film or the black girl the film was about because and i say this because black girls are sexualized so early Oh, so, no, but don't, yeah. you're right. And it's so interesting you bring this up because not to cut you off, there mm -hmm. was a film two years ago in France by a white female director and she got rave reviews and she did a whole film on black African culture and black coming of age. She did it about 12 year olds. So did you, we, you didn't even hear about that film, did you? Mm -mm. No. So you are right. It's always when we step into that arena. Yeah. Okay. And that's the one thing I was wondering about because, um, you know, if we were just talking about, if it was just about, if there were no white girls in it and we were just talking about black girls, I don't, I don't think anyone would have had a problem. And I definitely don't think anyone would have had a problem with the white men watching the black girls. No, just like slavery, the white slave masters had no problem going in and raping girls 24 seven and neither did their white wives. 
So <laughs> learn that in your new 1776 education class. Cause, cause <laughs> you ain't, <laughs> sit up there and indoctrinate your little white boys, your little white girls about that. Yo mm. daddies, yo daddies didn't so, want your I mean, mamas. They didn't want them. They had to go and abuse other people and the men, you know? And it got so bad with the white slave masters. They're, they're disgusting, just depth into sat Satan's lair. Yeah, go right ahead, 1776. And sometimes I'll come up with a punishment, punishment for that. And sometimes as punishment, they would rape the, the male slaves as well. So you can't. Yeah, but you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Punishment. Oh, punishment and. for the slave. But you know, some of these men just wanted to like, they had, when you give somebody absolute power like that, you run into nothing but evil. That's what absolute power gives you. They ain't happy with the, the woman, the, the white woman, the black woman, the, the kid. They did a lot of things. Fix that. Fix that in your people. Fix why all of you all in America, white people look so inbred. Fix it because you are in the South. You are. I mean, I suggest that before he does this, um, well, he's already done it, but I, I suggest their first reading be um, Toni Morrison's Beloved. He ain't reading he nothing. Oh, but he did claim <laughs> that he read Bob Woodward's book in one day. <laughs> Whose book? Bob Woodward. Oh, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I don't think Trump's ever he read, said he a book. read it yesterday. And then the day before yesterday, he said he read it yesterday. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I honestly don't think he's ever read one book. And oh, I don't yeah. even think he had the attention span to get through a Sally, Dick, and Jane book either. All right. <laughs> we're we're going <laughs> to end it there, ladies. We're going to end it there. As usual, <laughs> let us say. Um, Thank you again for taking the time. Jill, you got to run for politics, but that's all the comments. No, I know. I'm can't. just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'd like to thank both of you for taking the time out of your positive, productive schedules, dropping knowledge bombs as per usual. As always, how can people contact you? Jill, you go first. Uh, Twitter, Jill D. Jones. But I'm not really responding a lot to um, DMs. Like I said, kind of moving some stuff offline and uh, I am putting out what I put out, but I don't have time for haters because I'm sorry. I'm just so aggressive today, but it's just at that time. Okay. No problem. Aisha. I am usually on Twitter. Um, see Aisha. Staggers. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm taking some time more so to do a lot of work and to um, I'm on Twitter usually at night, mostly the last next couple next week or so. OK, yeah, fantastic. Well, I'm Dr. Vibe. I'm the host and producer of the award winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations. I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. And also you can catch me once a month hosting conversations for fathers that are co-sponsored by Dad Central Canada's National Fatherhood Organization and Dove Men Care. Thank you for watching live or on the replay. Excuse me very much. And if you uh, want to catch me, again, the best place website address, the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com. It's right on the screen there if you're watching this. But I also have to say it because you may not be watching. You may be just listening. As always, I'd like to end off all these conversations, all my conversations with these things. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions, then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Thank you very much for BIA Media for the excellent production. God bless. Peace to you all. Keep the faith and walk good. Good night, everybody.